Before atoms, before time, before space, what was there? Nothing. But then, why didn't it stay nothing? Why did the quiet, shapeless void suddenly erupt into stars, galaxies, and life asking questions about itself? Science gives us the how. The Big Bang, quantum fluctuations, inflation. The mathematics is astonishing, but the why? That unsettling silence behind every origin story remains untouched. Why should anything exist at all instead of the cold, absolute emptiness of non-existence? Is reality the default or a cosmic accident? If nothing is simpler, cleaner, and more probable, then something, this, needs an explanation. And yet, every explanation assumes one thing, that something exists to ask it. Maybe existence is brute fact, beyond reason. Or maybe it's the final illusion, the one we can't escape because we're inside it. Philosophers wrestle with this paradox. Physicists stare into equations that hint at multiverses and vacuum states. But at the bottom of everything is a question that science can't touch. Not because it's too complex, but because it might be too simple. But even if the universe had to exist, did it have to produce you with thoughts, desires, and the feeling of freedom? You reach for a cup of coffee. You think you chose to. But what if your brain made that decision milliseconds before you even became aware of it? Science can track your neurons lighting up, decisions forming in the subconscious. MRI scans can predict your choices before you do, but none of that tells us whether you could have done otherwise. That lingering sense that you could have said no, is it real or just a trick of the mind? Are we just clever machines, atoms obeying physics or something more? Every courtroom assumes freedom, Every apology begs for it. Every relationship depends on the idea that we choose. But if our choices are dominoes, falling from causes we didn't choose, then who are we really? Agents of will? Or just passengers in biological machines pretending to steer? And if we're passengers, does anything, guilt, forgiveness, ambition, actually mean what we think it means? Or are we just watching the movie of our lives, mistaking it for a steering wheel? And maybe the question of choice is tangled in something even stranger, awareness. Not intelligence, not thought, but experience. Imagine explaining the color red to someone who's never seen it. You can describe the wavelength, the eye's response, even brain scans showing red being processed, but none of that captures the experience, that vivid inner flicker, the redness of red, or the ache of heartbreak, or the taste of salt on skin. That's consciousness, the feeling of being, Science can track neurons firing, but it cannot explain why it feels like anything at all. Why does matter, arranged a certain way, become aware? Why isn't the brain just a calculator, cold and dark inside? This is the hard problem of consciousness. Not how it works, but why it exists. Because awareness seems unnecessary. You could imagine a zombie version of you, same thoughts, same actions, but with the lights off inside. No you. And right now, no microscope, no algorithm, no clever model can tell us why there's a light on in the first place. And once you're conscious, once you feel, another question rises like a shadow, why? Biology says survive, evolution says reproduce. But when we look up at the stars or hold a dying loved one's hand, those answers feel small. We don't just want reasons, we want meaning. We want to matter. But purpose isn't in our DNA, it's in our poetry, our grief, our dreams. Science can give you the facts of life, but not the why of yours. Do we invent meaning or discover it? Is there some cosmic mission written in the stars? Or are we scribbling answers in the margins, trying to make sense of the silence? Some say purpose is whatever you make of it. Others feel it's already there, like a melody you're meant to hear. But the question keeps echoing especially when life hurts, when the grind feels empty, when joy slips through your hands, that silence you feel when you ask, what's the point? Maybe that silence is the point, not an answer to find, but a space to fill. And in the absence of cosmic instructions, we try to write our own. We all believe in good, but try defining it without using the word should. Is good whatever brings the most happiness? or whatever follows a rule, no matter the outcome. 
science can show how moral instincts evolved, how oxytocin fosters trust, how brains light up with empathy. It can tell us why we feel guilt or loyalty or rage at injustice, but it can't tell you if lying to save a life is right or wrong. Morality lives in the space between facts. Utilitarianism, deontology, virtue ethics, each offers a map, but none agree on the terrain. One says outcomes matter most, another says principles matter more, a third says it's who you become that counts, and every system stumbles on edge cases, the impossible decisions where any choice feels wrong. Yet every day we make those choices. We punish, we forgive, we sacrifice. And without a divine rule book or a scientific formula, how do we know what we ought to do? Or worse, what if ought doesn't exist at all? What if morality is just a useful illusion, a trick evolution played to make cooperation feel sacred? And yet, we still cry at injustice. We still cheer at acts of courage. Maybe right and wrong aren't in the universe, but they're in us. And maybe that's enough, or maybe it's not. Which brings us to the oldest question of all, one whispered in temples, screamed in wars, and pondered in silence. Is anyone listening? Is the universe a machine or a message? Science is built on observation, test, measure, repeat. But what if what you're asking about isn't in the lab? God, or gods, aren't particles. They don't leave trails in a cloud chamber. They don't show up in double-blind trials. So science stays silent. It can explain how the universe works, but not why there's a universe at all. It can study religion, its psychology, history, social function, but not the divine. And if the system can't explain everything, maybe it's because the system isn't real. You're watching this. But how do you know it's real? Not just in a dreamlike sense, but at the deepest level. Could everything, you, this video, your memories, be lines of code running on some cosmic server, a simulation, a trick of data, a game that feels like life? The simulation theory isn't just science fiction. Philosophers, physicists, and tech billionaires all take it seriously. Because if we ever create simulated beings, ones that feel, dream, wonder, then logically, it becomes more likely that we are simulations too. Not because it's spooky, but because it's probable. Eventually, simulated worlds could outnumber real ones. Science can test the rules within the game. It can look for glitches, limits, unexplained constants, but it may never let us see what's outside the screen. If there is an outside, and if we are simulations, does that make us less real? Or just differently real? Because even if the world is code, your pain, your joy, your questions still matter. And maybe what matters most isn't whether we're real, but how we choose to live as if we are. And even if the simulation is real, there's one rule we can't seem to break, time. We live in it, we race against it, we waste it, kill it, treasure it. But what is time? Physics says it's a dimension, like space. Relativity says it bends, stretches, slows. Time moves differently for someone near a black hole. A second for them could be a year for us. That's not science fiction, that's space time. But our experience is different. We don't feel time as a map. We feel it as a river, a flow. The future seems open, the past, locked, the present, the only place we are. But what if that's just perception? What if past, present, and future all exist at once, and we're just crawling through the illusion, frame by frame? Some physicists believe time is an emergent property, not fundamental, but a side effect of entropy and memory. Others think time might not exist at all. Science can write time into equations. It can even remove it from some, but it still can't tell us what we're moving through. Because maybe time isn't something we're in. Maybe it's something we're trapped by. Or maybe we're not moving through time at all. Maybe time is moving through us. The universe didn't come with a manual. But asking these questions, it's the closest we get to reading between the lines. So now it's your turn. Which of these questions kept you thinking? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Or if there's a mystery you want us to explore next, let us know. Subscribe for more videos that don't just explain the world, but challenge the way you see it. And until next time, stay curious.